Nimrod is an Old Testament personage from Genesis 10 verse 8. Now Cush, the son of Ham, became the father of Nimrod. He became a mighty one on the earth. He was the great-grandson of Noah and would have had first-hand knowledge from his parents about the Lord. He had also been told how God saved Noah and his family from the flood and from the fallen angels who populated the earth before the flood. As a close descendant of Noah, one can imagine that he was highly respected. He is credited in Genesis 10 verses 10 to 12 with building many cities including the Tower of Babel in Babylon. As the ruler of the city, Nimrod must have been influential in the building of this structure. A tall tower could have served as a high shelter to save people from another flood. Therefore, the tower was a rejection of God's promise that there would be no more floods to destroy the earth. It was also an example of great pride that people could escape God's judgments by creating a tall refuge. This displeased the Lord and in Genesis 11 verses 5 to 8, the Lord mixes the languages and the people scattered to different places in the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. The Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. And this is what they began to do, and now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. In addition to this, there are many archaeological artifacts which illustrate that Nimrod was involved with the introduction of many evil pagan worship practices and pagan doctrines. An interesting book along this line is The Two Babylons by Reverend Alexander Hislop. The author traces various Christian beliefs back to their evil inception in Babylon. However, evil as Nimrod was, he was a mere man, not the Antichrist nor the son of Satan. The Babylonian Beast, Genesis 10 verse 8 to 9. A man named Cush had a son, whom he named Nimrod. The name Nimrod literally means a let us rebel. Nimrod was a rebel by birth. This passage in Genesis shows us three things about Nimrod. It speaks of his arrogance. Genesis 10 verse 9. The phrase, a mighty hunter before the Lord, does not mean that God just merely saw him hunt, but that Nimrod was in the face of God. We would say today, in your face. Nimrod was not a hunter of animals, but a hunter of the souls of men. Nimrod was a rebel against Almighty God. There is coming another Nimrod in the last days. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 The Apostle Paul is speaking of the coming kingdom of Christ. The word for falling away is the same word from which we get our word apostasy. There is coming an apostasy first, and then the man of sin will be revealed. Jesus is the man of sorrows, the Antichrist is the man of sin. There is coming a man of sin who is the son of perdition, which means unmitigated wickedness. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 1. Anti means against and instead of. 2. The Antichrist will be against the true Christ. He will present himself instead of the true Christ. The identity of Antichrist points us back to Nimrod, and Nimrod points us forward to Antichrist. The seven heads have been identified already, 
and yet there is something connected with the record to indicate the re-establishment of all these ancient sovereignties. It has been said already that Antichrist himself will be the embodiment and consummation of all earthly sovereignties from beginning to end, summed up in one person. John saw him coming up out of the midst of peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, Revelation 13 verse 1, 17 verse 15. When he thus arises for the last time, he brings these seven heads up with him. Who can tell but that the sovereign powers of Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome will all be re-established and united in the sovereign power of commerce now developing? Yeah, perhaps, Menes, Sennacherib, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus, Alexander, and Caesar themselves, with a host of others, will be resurrected, brought up from the pit of hell, endowed with the energy and strength of the devil, and given power and authority in confederation with Antichrist. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Revelation 13 verse 3 This clause almost seems to spell Julius Caesar. The Greek strengthens this pasition, for it signifies a sword wound. Would it be a surprise to you to know that a great host of the world's tyrants will be resurrected and reinstated to power along with Nimrod? Another question arising in connection with Antichrist's identity is, who is the false prophet or second beast? As I said concerning Antichrist, I do not dogmatize at this point. I do not know. Yet, there are some points we will do well to remember. First, the false prophet is an individual person. He ascends from hell just as Antichrist does. He is a person who once lived on earth, died and went to hell, and shall ascend out of hell. Since his work is so closely allied with Antichrist, and since Antichrist was once on earth before, it is probable that the false prophet is a person who was very closely allied to Nimrod in the construction of Babel. It is clear that while Antichrist will be a political leader, the false prophet will be an ecclesiastical leader. It is he that causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the beast. Revelation 13 verse 12 He is the leading preacher or archbishop during the reign of Antichrist. Some think that he is Judas Iscariot, and there are some good points in favor of this position, but I feel that it is well for us, in order to identify the false prophet, to look for someone who was closely associated with Nimrod in the construct ion of Babel. The two will surely work together, they are now in hell together, and if we identify Antichrist to be Nimrod, we might find the false prophet to be some co-worker of Nimrod. Looking for Nimrod's co-worker or archbishop, we are somewhat disappointed at first, but by a closer examination of the record of profane history this person is revealed. It was his wife. Her name is said to have been Semiramis. Sem is the Hebrew for a name in Genesis 11 verse 4. So it appears that the name or mark that was to be placed above Nimrod's tower was an image of his wife. He was a political leader, his wife was the ecclesiastical leader. So this Sem or mark was an outward profession of religion as well as a mark of confederation. Semiramis' image was the banner of the nation, the religious standard under which the army marched. Nimrod and his wife were the two great leaders in the first of the world's sovereign powers. The clearest Bible type of the church is a woman. Paul said of man and wife, they two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Ephesians 5 verse 31 and 32 
A pure woman is a type of the pure church, a wicked woman is a type of the false church. A woman, Semiramis, was the leader of the first false church this side of the flood. This church was united with the state, a political power. Such a union God always terms spiritual fornication. Of just such a union we read in Revelation 2 verse 20. Thank you for watching the video. Like, share and subscribe the Sermon TV. Comment your opinion below. God bless you.